Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode 12 of my ongoing X Files series. We are finishing up disc three already. Is it possible? Um, of course, working off uh, the beautiful box set I got off Amazon UK. Um, the cheapest way to code these days, man. Um, for sure. Uh, episode uh, 12, Fire. Uh, written uh, written by Chris Carter, um, which is really cool. Directed by one Larry Shaw. It first aired December 17th. So this is your pre-Christmas episode. Um, we'll have to wait a year before we actually get a Christmas episode, I think. Uh, 93, of course. Uh, guesting uh, Amanda Pays uh, as Phoebe Green. She is a, a, a British uh, inspector who uh, went to Oxford with, uh, studied there with uh, Mulder, a uh, previous lover of sorts, we come to find out. Uh, she's actually been in a couple movies, man. She's been in uh, Leviathan, The Kindred, uh, which is pretty cool just to name uh, two. Uh, Mark Shepard plays our, um, the lively, I think that's how you say it. Uh, he is our uh, main antagonist, our uh, pyro, uh, Kin, uh, kinesis, pyrokinesis, if I say it, one who has the ability to spontaneously create fire, man, and uh, he does it pretty uh, well. This episode is uh, intriguing for a lot of reasons. One, uh, we're delving into a previous love affair uh, that Mulder had years, years ago, and he's not actually that ecstatic uh, that this girl has uh, wandered back into his life, although he does kind of fall under the spell a little bit, which is so funny. You can see where, you know, it's funny. You can see where Scully is already taking a liking to him, and she does not like this girl at all, period. And we'll see that occasionally throughout the series, right? Where, uh, you know, even though we don't get the romance really early on, uh, as much as you would think or maybe want uh, between these two, they do share intimate moments, um, emotional, emotionally driven intimate moments that mean matter a whole lot more than just simply ending up in each other's bed or something. I mean, right? Um, it's their level of care for one another. And but Scully, man, she's not. But this one, this episode has a weird. Okay, so. Basically, you got this nut job, right? Uh, sort of a la Jack the Ripper, but he's a pyrokinetic uh, guy who can just uh, make it seem as though people have spontaneously combusted. Uh, he does have a little bit of a help aid from, I think it's rocket fuel or something that's utilized in some of these things that he does. But he does have this gift, um, which for the most part is, uh, is somewhat of a controllable gift, but he... His ego does not. His ego does not allow him uh, to be as, um, I guess, for the lack of a better word, mossed with it. Uh, he gets a, he gets a little too bold uh, at points. There's a scene where he's in a bar and uh, and his ego is getting out too far ahead of himself, and uh, he ultimately ends up burning down this bar as a result. But that leads to the first major sketch of who this guy looks like. Now, he basically has been targeting uh, the aristocratic class families. Uh, the only connection between any of these incidences that have been happening is uh, that he's been writing love letters, apparently, to the wife um, and then targeting the husband. And so he's basically going after these aristocratic families. Now, one family that escaped uh, an incident with him in England has uh, come to their um, home here state stateside. Uh, geez, I wasn't even paying attention. Are they near Boston? I think. Um, anyhow, uh, so they're here temporarily, but he has basically gone out in front of them, uh, taken out their driver, and now is masquerade, uh, masquerade, or yeah taking out a driver or their caretaker but he's masquerading as their caretaker um and so as far as they know he's you know he's the right guy there but he is there ahead of them and he is of course targeting uh the husband the opening scene is really pretty frightening because the husband is uh of this other family is getting ready to go somewhere he's walking to the car and then suddenly you know he just again seemingly spontaneously combust and it's kind of an eerie frightening thing to think that somebody could have that kind of talent and use it like that but uh and so really what you have here is uh this uh this investigator green who uh 
Bobby Green, I think is her name in here. She comes back, she comes over and she enlists Mulder to help crack this case um, before any more die via being burned. Now we also find out Mulder has a deep fear of uh, fire. And so this kind of works well into the episode as well. There's a moment where he has, uh, there. there's a um, uh, function of sorts going on at the uh, downtown at the hotel that the family is going to. And of course the caretaker there uh, takes advantage of this situation. And Mulder has a chance to go up immediately and say the kids are apparently in, in this other floor in the place and this is where the fire breaks out. What we think we find out is the caretaker uses as a, as a means of rescuing the children himself, thus making himself look like a hero and really tying him, cementing himself with this family. Mulder attemptively tries to go up and get the children, but his fear disallows him. He'll get a second opportunity later on in the episode where he will overcome that fear. And, uh, and so that is a neat play going on in this episode as well and the weirdest thing so like green okay so green is just probably just messing with Mulder. i mean she probably while she's stateside wants to ignite no pun intended uh lack, for the lack of a better word ignite this old relationship if nothing else just for the time she's there and then head back to england and um but the weirdest thing you get towards the end of the episode as we're heading towards our climax of the episode and Inspector Green, Mulder, uh, when they start to realize exactly who the antagonist is, who this guy is, and that he is actually the caretaker there um, working, you know, from this for this family. He uh, Mulder gets there out in front of in front of Scully, I think, gets there first. And as he comes through the door uh, abruptly we see in the weirdest thing, and it's not in the trivia on IMDb, and it's, I haven't really, it's not where I, other places I read, um, but he uh, he bursts into the door and, and uh, burst upon both Green and, I think this is the Marsden family in question, I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty sure it's the Marsden family. And sees uh, Inspector Green uh, on the staircase with, uh, with the husband. And they're sort of in this weird embrace, and Mulder just gives that look like, Ah, so games of foot, huh? Um, and interesting. So it was, uh, that was weird. And the husband thoroughly realizes like, oh crap, this don't look good. Uh, and so there's only, that moment only lasts for a second, of course, because we suddenly launch towards what in effect is the end of the episode and the resolution ultimately. Now this guy has been working day after day, basically painting. And I don't know, must be, fumeless because he's been painting a coat of this uh, rocket fuel in the interior and in, in exterior of the house I think so that when the grand finale ultimately comes in the end this place will go up so fast and there's not going to be anything uh, left of it um, and uh, lost my uh, thought there I <laughs> completely lost my thought so he's been there working doing all of this too working towards his end, which ultimately, and as a result of that, uh, in the final confrontation between Mulder and him, and then eventually Scully and Green, ultimately Green douses, uh, like the Wicked Witch of the West, douses him with a can of this, uh, this rocket fuel stuff. So ultimately when you get outside the, outside the house, uh, this guy can't control his fire and ignites. Uh, and when he does, he just goes up. And so the final the final scene at the end is, of course, he has suffered, what do they call it, fifth, sixth degree burns, with a, which apparently there are, uh, which have consumed most of his body. But the weird thing is he lives and he's basically, his body's coming back. Now, the cool thing about that is he could have been a character that could have, like a few other characters in the X-Files lore, come back for a second episode. They never did anything with it, even though it was sort of left open-ended and they could have brought the same guy back, I, I would imagine. Um, but for whatever reason, they just, they never wrote a sequel to it. Like we'll see an episode, is it 21 or 22? We'll get uh, Tombs, which is the sequel really in effect to Squeeze, which we'll see the entrance of Skinner, which is pretty, pretty awesome. I cannot wait to get to that episode to see Skinner for the very first time. Um, and so, yeah, so interesting. And you know what? I need even look to see what else this guy, what Larry Shaw has done. Um, 
this is Mulder's first on-screen kiss as well. Uh, kind of interesting there. So some things continually are being established in terms of maybe, you know, the relationship between Scully and Mulder. I think really, really we see more from Scully's point of view of how much she's really getting connected to him. And But as far as a romantic relationship, it's just not quite, it's not there yet. Uh, but the foundation for it is being laid slowly but surely, right? Uh, and so pretty awesome, pretty, pretty awesome episode. Uh, it's too bad they didn't take this further uh, with a continuation later on. Uh, could have made for an interesting uh, story, especially if you would have brought Green back into the fold, uh, Amanda Pays. That could have made for an interesting episode. So, uh, so fear of fire on Mulder's part, uh, law, a fling from the past, uh, seeing how Scully reacts to all of this, and some pretty neat um, effects in terms of um, uh, in terms of fire, uh, just uh, the control burns and whatnot. Um, just, uh, I think the only one who really got hurt in this episode was Mulder. Got a minor burn on his hand. Uh, there's this great scene at the end where our, our, our arsonist is going to ignite the whole place. And when he does, he quickly has to move himself out of frame because the heat apparently was so intense, uh, he just couldn't stand there. So uh, they were really working with some really real dangerous uh, stuff, but apparently all worked well. Interesting. So episode 12, and so we will leave... Uh, leave this disc and um i'm just taking a guess it seems like beyond the sea is, is this the episode where brad durov is he in that one i can't remember i'm excited just thinking about beyond the sea so until then as always we end these things off with go bills this is not a dream not a dream we might be useful to you.